guys, my name is Katie and I work for the award winning publishing company How To Become. Now this video is for electrical comprehension and it's for anyone who wants to know what to expect, how to pass these types of tests and show you sample questions that you could be asked during your assessment. So what are electrical comprehension tests? Well they specifically are designed to measure your performance in relation to electrical concepts. And what I mean by electrical concepts are shown as follows. So, for example, simple circuits, electrical symbols, switches, lamps, currents, electrical energy, hazard perceptions, electrical safety, and so forth and so forth. Okay, so all of these will make up an electrical comprehension assessment. So who has to sit an electrical comprehension test? Anyone who is applying for a job that requires strong levels of electrical and technical ability will most likely be expected to undertake an electrical comprehension test when they apply for the job. Okay, So this is usually before an interview, but some jobs offer the interview before the assessment. Okay, So it just depends on what job you've applied for. So types of jobs that require an electrical comprehension test could include signal repairers, electrical engineering, wiremen, f the armed forces, electricians, engineers, physics, Royal Air Force and technical positions. Okay, So if you're applying for a job that involves one of these aspects, then it's most likely you will be expected to undertake an electrical test. So preparing for your assessment. So there's no doubt that you will struggle with electrical aptitude tests if you have no prior knowledge in regards to technical or electrical concepts. So you need to ensure yourself with the best preparation in order to secure that job position for which you've applied. So it is imperative that you take the time and focus on what is expected in terms of a successful electrical comprehension test. Okay, so... Carry out lots of sample testing questions which focus on the subject you are preparing for. So in regards to electrical tests, it's vitally important that you understand what the question is asking. So you need to read the question carefully to ensure you have read it correctly. So whilst undertaking sample tests, it's important that if you get a question wrong, spend some time working out why you got that wrong, okay? So within this short video, we've provided answers and detailed explanations to assist you through your learning process. So if you get a question wrong, consider why you have got it wrong, okay? So read through the answers in order to improve your overall knowledge. So when practicing, you must ensure that your work that you work on your speed as well as accuracy, okay? So most tests are administered under time limits and therefore you will be expected to answer as many questions as possible within the allotted time given. Having said this, you do not want to sacrifice the accuracy of your answers, okay? So do not rush through the questions. You want to avoid making careless mistakes. So the majority of tests will be in a multiple choice format. You want to steer away from wild guesses because this can come at a price and you might lose marks for incorrect answers. So this will depend on your assessors. So just find out prior to your assessment whether any wild guessing will deduct marks in your overall assessment, okay? So some questions might ask you to draw or sketch an electrical component. So make sure that your drawing is clear and it's labelled. When preparing for an electrical comprehension test, you should spend an adequate amount of time practicing circuit questions and symbol questions okay so circuit questions are the basic foundations of any electrical test and are often used to assess basic understanding of electrical components so symbol questions refer to component components found within circuits such as resistors lamps fuses amplifiers and so forth these types of questions form the very basics of electrical understandings Therefore, you need to master these to a high standard to even be considered for the job post. So having a basic GCSE understanding of physics and electronics will be an advantage to you. So you need to fully be equipped to tackle these questions and score highly on the assessment. So brush up on the basics of physics, circuits and electronics. Finally, we've also provided you some additional free online psychometric tests 
which will help to further improve your competence in this particular testing area. To, to gain access to the free online psychometric test, simply go to this link that I've provided here, okay? So it will give you some more sample questions for you to work through. Okay, so let's have a look at a few sample questions. So sample question one, what are the basic particles that make up an atom? So this is relying on your knowledge of science and physics. So your answer options are A, protons, neutrons and particles, B, protons and electrons, C, neutrons, protons and electrons, or D, mesons, neutrons and electrons. So you will need to know the actual answer that you, you cannot guess to a question like this. So in actual fact, the answer is C, but you would need to know the basics in order to answer that question correctly, okay? So it is in fact neutrons, protons and electrons that make up an atom. Sample question two. In the following circuit, if switch A closes and switch B remains open, what will happen? So there are your answer options and here is your circuit. So if switch A closes, so this switch here closes, so that will be shut and form a complete circuit there. But switch B remains open, what will happen? So is it A, bulbs X, Y and Z will illuminate? B, bulb X will illuminate? Answer C, bulbs Y and Z will illuminate? Or answer D, no bulbs will illuminate? But as you can see, if this switch closes but this one is open, you should realise that it's no bulbs will illuminate because this is a broken circuit. This switch, switch B, would have to be closed in in order for the circuit to be complete because the battery, the power source, is on that route there. So that would have to be closed in order for the battery to work correctly. Sample question three. In the following circuit, if bulb three is removed and the switch is closed, which bulbs will illuminate? So they, there are your answer options. And here is your circuit. Okay, so if we removed bulb three, so this is the bulb here, and the switch is closed, so again, this shows that the circuit would be working because that switch would be shut and therefore it would allow the battery to provide energy through the circuit. But remember, you're taking out this bulb here. So you should realise that the answer is bulbs 1 and 2 will illuminate, okay? And you should know this because if you take in bulb 3 out of the equation, this means that it will affect bulb 4 because it runs on the same circuit. But bulbs 1 and 2 will still illuminate because it runs on a circuit on its own and still has the power source and the switch would still be closed. Okay, So working from here, you've got the power source, you go up to bulb 1, bulb 2, you go straight down and this would be closed. So therefore bulbs 1 and 2 would still illuminate. Bulb 4 wouldn't illuminate because you've broken the circuit here by taking out the bulb. Sample question 4. So what are the minimum and maximum acceptable values if, if a resistor has the resistance of 14 and can tolerate plus minus 20%? So this is a more technical question and I will show you how to work it out. So you would... 14k would be 14,000 so you would need to divide this by 100 and times it by 20 okay which would give you 2,800 so to work out the minimum value you'd use 14,000 minus the 2,800 which would give you 11,200 or 11.2 and the maximum 14,000 plus the 2,800 which would give you 16,800 or 16.8. So this is a more technical question and this type of question would appear in a more advanced electrical comprehension test. So sample question 5. Using the Wheatstone bridge circuit calculate the resistance of R3. So here we've got your circuit. So how to work it out. So in order to work out the resistance you should use the following equation, okay? So R1 divided by R2 equals R3 divided by R4, okay? So R1 divided by R2 equals, so it's the same amount as R3 
divided by R4, but you have to work out what R3 is. So R1 and R2, so 180 divided by 400 is 0.45. So R3 divided by R4 needs to be equivalent to 0.45. So R3 equals 180, which is R1, times the 600, which is the value of R4, and then divide that by R2, which is 400, to give you 270. So if you factor that into the equation, 270 divided by the 600 will give you 0.45. So both of these are now equal. So that completes the sample questions of this video. And I would like to introduce our electrical comprehension test workbook, which contains a whole range of tips and advice for you to work through your electrical comprehension test. It contains loads and loads of testing questions for basic, intermediate and advanced tests so you can start at basic level and work your way up. And this is ideal for anyone who has to take an electrical comprehension test at any level. It also contains detailed explanations so you know how to get to each and every answer. So it's a comprehensive guide that is invaluable for anyone who is about to undertake their electrical comprehension test. So all that's left for me to say is thank you for watching. I hope this video has helped. For more information on electrical comprehension tests, please visit howtobecome.com where, where you'll find a lot more information about electrical comprehension tests and more links to um, sample questions. If you do have any questions, please drop me a message below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Please sub subscribe to the channel. It is free. You will be kept up to, up to date with more of my career and education videos. Take care and I wish you all the best of luck in your electrical comprehension tests.